And during the one and only vice presidential debate of the 2020 election, Senator Kamala Harris recommitted to cannabis decriminalization in the name of social justice. Let's take a listen. We will, on the issue of criminal justice reform, get rid of private prisons and cash bail, and Thank we you. will decriminalize marijuana, and Thank we you, will we will expunge the records of those who have Thank been you, convicted Harris. of marijuana. This is Thank the you, time Senator for Harris. leadership on a tragic, tragic issue Senator Harris, of your unarmed time is black up. people in America. Who Thank have you, been Senator killed. Harris. With the future of this year's presidential debates unclear, Senator Harris's comments may be the only time that marijuana is mentioned during the election. For more on this, joining us now is Cheddar's cannabis reporter, Chloe Aiello. Chloe, take it away. Thanks, Brad. I am here now with Al Harrington. He is the founder of Viola Brand and a former NBA player. Al, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to the show. We just listened to Harris's comments on cannabis decriminalization. Uh, people were super excited about it. Uh, it moved the markets. Why was this such a big moment? It was about time. You know, I think that, uh, you know, the cannabis market is definitely a rocket ship, you know, moving up and is, you know, obviously something that can really boost our economy. Um, you know, being that it was deemed essential, you know, I think it's being shown that, you know, cannabis is something that, you know, people need to, you know, live healthy uh, lives. And, you know, it's, it's great to see her take that stance. We do have to bring home all the people that were convicted, especially while billions of dollars are being made in this industry. And we have to also create opportunity for these people to also be able to participate in the industry to right some of the wrongs. And I want to dig into the details a little bit there, because we know that former VP Joe Biden uh, is considerably more conservative on canna cannabis than uh, Kamala Harris, being that she sponsored the MORE Act, a sweeping progressive uh, decriminalization bill. So what in your mind would decriminalization in the Biden administration look like? Well, obviously, we, you know, what they're talking about is potentially, you know, federal legalization. But, you know, I think that there's definitely some baby steps that need to be taken. Obviously, they need to change the schedule you know, so that, that we can do proper testing. But I think that even when that happens, we also have to keep in mind all the pioneers and people that have gotten this industry to where it is right now. And like I said, we want to make sure that there's equity opportunities so that we can also benefit from, you know, a, a, a product that they would, that they use to, you know, uh, destroy a lot of people's lives through incarceration. Now, speaking of those people who have been disproportionately impacted by cannabis criminalization, we do know that black Americans are four times more likely to be arrested for cannabis use than white Americans, despite comparable rates of use. So what kind of impact would this have on communities of color? Um, you know, I think we'll have huge impacts, you know, but like I said, we just also have to remember because a lot of times, you know, the way that these laws and legislation is written, you know, social equity is something that is brought up, you know, on the tail end. And, you know, we feel like, you know, at that point, sometimes it's a little too late to enter the market. So we want to be able to have representation in the beginning so that we get an even playing field so we can go out and compete for market share, you know, in in, uh, in states or in, you know, uh, markets where, like I said, we were mostly affected. Now, you personally are a business leader in cannabis with Viola Brands. What responsibility in your mind do does the cannabis industry actually have in cultivating equity and inclusion? Yeah, we have to just continue to, you know, like I said, use our platforms and create opportunities for people of color that, like I said, that were affected. And, you know, like I said, a lot of these social equity opportunities that are presented, a lot of times they're given to people like that don't have proper business acumen and different things like that. So what we need to do is people, the companies that are established, we have to figure out ways to give back and incubate these applicants and these people so that they can be successful because this is generational wealth, you know, at risk if we can't, you know, capitalize on this. Now, you have a presence in multiple states. What specifically are you doing in these markets to promote this type of equity and inclusion? Yeah, so we're doing something through our uh, incubator program that we're about to uh, uh, launch called Viola Bills. Um, we also have Viola Cares where we, um, you know, we reach out and help uh, people who were incarcerated for nonviolent crimes, specifically uh, cannabis crimes, and help them get back into society. You know, so we set up these toolkits that give them options so that when they do come home, they can try to find a way to land on their feet. And eventually, you know, I think that through some of these initiatives and using companies like mine and other some of these other companies, we can also employ these people and bring and plug them right into the industry. 
Now, we know that cannabis, final question for you, is sort of a bipartisan issue. We continue to hear that said. And obviously, the election this November could go either of two ways. What do you think uh, the prognosis is for the cannabis industry, you know, if either of these candidates were to win? Um, you know, we're not sure, right? Because, you know, no one's really, like, really gave us a plan on in which how they plan on, uh, you know, uh, bringing along the industry. So we just have to continue to watch. You know, I think that Camilla Harris, I think because of her background in regards to some of the arrests that she had in the past and she understand the impact that it had on the communities, that I think that she's probably more relevant to understanding, you know, some of the issues. But, um, you know, obviously under Trump, you know, the market has, you know, continued to evolve and continue to grow. But, um, you know, we, we, we need someone to really focus on it so that we know exactly, you know, in which way we're, we're going to be able to continue to move forward. Al, thank you so much for joining us today. That's Al Harrington, founder of Viola Brands and former NBA player.